Hi everyone, I'm Virginia Kilmore and welcome to my studio. Today's card that we're going to make involves using an embossing folder to emboss paper and create a texture and then we're going to sand the paper to highlight or bring out the texture. Um, it's really a quick and easy technique but it will make your forest trees that we're going to be doing today look like snow. So it's kind of a neat idea. So let's get started. So this is today's card, and what I love about it, it looks like snow right on the tips of the trees. I think that's so pretty, and it was so easy to do with our Oso Ombre paper. Um, Oso Ombre paper you can get right now for free uh, with a $50 purchase, and I'll show it to you. Um, it's a pack of 48 sheets of paper. Um, it comes in uh, an ombre Granny Apple Green to white, uh, Blackberry Bliss to white, and it's hard to see the, the ombre-ness, but I'll show it to you right here. You can really see how that changes. And it does the same thing on the pattern side. Um, it goes from dark to light. So it's really a pretty paper, and it, there's only four colors that it works with. Blackberry Bliss, Bermuda Bay, Granny Apple Green, and Rococo Rose. Um, all you have to do is spend $50 and you can pick that little packet. There's a, a, a sample of it that I just got. So 48 sheets. I think that's amazing. Six by six. Um, so to make the card, we are going to need to run uh, this Oso Ombre paper through an embossing folder. And because it's a large embossing folder, I'm going to have to bring my big machine up. Now, our embossing folders are designed so that you always, the front of them is always where you see the logo stamping up. And then the only thing I have to decide is where do I want it to start and end. And because I like to have some of the white down here, I'm putting the dark up there. Um, and then I'm just going to put that in there, bring my big uh, stamp and emboss machine. Sorry, it's, it's going to be tough to fit it all in here today, but we're going to do our best. I think I'm going to turn it around this way so that you can see a little bit of it. And what I love about our Stampin' Emboss machine is it comes with the plates come with numbers and pictures. Because if you're like me, you struggle to remember every time you use it. So this is plate number one. And for embossing, you need plate number one and number four if you're using a 3D embossing folder. And I name all of my folders, I put their names in whether they're 3D. And you can sort of tell the 3D because it's thicker. Um, and then that's it, we just run it through. And now comes the fun part, we get to sand it a little bit. So I'm going to take that off. And I'm not going to decide right away uh, how much I want because I'm going to trim it down to approximately uh, three and three quarters. What I'm going to do is start by sanding and I like to use a nail file only because it's flat and if you start sanding it too hard you can actually rip the paper. So this allows me to sort of control the areas that I want showing and you can see I'm starting to get Maybe I'll zoom that in. I just gotta remember to remember to zoom out so you can sort of see it. Now, if I really wanna focus on one area, I can pick this up and just really focus on a tree. But if I'm getting too much in an area, I can back off by using uh, different sections of the, the tool. So you see how that's lifting and getting down to the white core paper that it has there. 
I'm going to work on this little section by turning it. Now, you are going to get lots of paper on your desktop that you may have to uh, brush off. I did notice that if you switch between the Blackberry Bliss and the Oso oh Ombre, you're, you're going to get Blackberry Bliss um, sand paper um, or sanded paper on your green. So you want to make sure to clean that between using it. But I think that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just going to brush off my stuff and shake off my paper and now I'm ready to cut it. Um, so I think what I'll do is first of all cut my top line um, and then cut the rest. Because I want to have a good section of dark to sort of show off the, the paper. Um, and then this is three and three quarters. So I'm going to take it there. So that's where my my um, light area is going to be. And now all that's left to determine is how much I want to take off. And I think I'm going to take off a little bit from both sides because I notice it gets a little ratty at the edges. So by doing that, I'm going to make it nice and clean. And I only, I want that five and a half. So I'm going to take off exactly five and a half so that it fits. Okay. So that's the hardest part right there. It looks so pretty. I love it. It looks like a winter wonderland. Um, and so now I'm going to take my cardstock. Now, I haven't talked about this before, but some people have asked me this before. When you score your paper, oh, I'm glad I remembered. When you score your paper, I don't know if you can see the score line. Yeah, there you go. Do you use the bumpy side or the inny side? And I have been taught that you fold on the any side out. So it's the valley or the hill. This was the hill, this was the valley. I fold the valley in to, for the front of the card. I don't know if you've ever been taught that, but I thought that was an interesting little aside and I thought I would share that with you. Now I'm going to decorate the inside of my card, even though I don't have much um, that relates to these leaves, but at least it gives a little something in there. I'm gonna go ahead and put glue down and get that in there. Let that sort of sit and marinate while I get the rest of my card going. I need to do my sentiment, um, so I'm gonna start with that. Um, let's see, I need this. And my sentiment's gonna be done on a scrap piece of paper. And I am going to do thinking of you. Is that what I had? No, I did thank you so much. I think I like that better. I'm going to just stamp that here on an extra um, strip that I have. And because it's a strip, it's very easy to slide in and punch out my sentiment. I love it because I can center it, make sure it's straight if I haven't stamped it straight. And now all that I'm left to do is to get scrap piece of my Blackberry Bliss paper, which you can see I did earlier, and punch out. Now I can set this right back in my pile of card fronts and use it later because you won't see this behind most cards. Double oval punch, the best punch in the new catalog. I cannot tell you how much I love that punch. I use it all the time. You get two punches for the price of one. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this together and set that aside to dry so that I don't rub it while it's wet. And let's get this together. So I'm going to use a bow across here. And you know my little technique where I take um, and just tie a knot. So I'm going to take a length of string, usually about eight inches, and just tie off a knot. I love this crinkle ribbon. I'm so worried that we're going to lose it. Um, it's such a pretty ribbon when the new catalog comes out because they like to get rid of a lot of our ribbons. And I'm always upset because I love, 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 love their ribbons. And I am going to set it off a little bit, so I'm only cutting it, you know, halfway. 
Um, actually, I'm not cutting it halfway. This halfway would have been down, down here. Um, I cut it sort of so that one end is longer than the other. And then I can go ahead and set that on here. And I'll flip my cardstock over. Uh, it is a little bit harder to put this tape runner on this paper because it has that texture. Whenever you have a texture, it's just a tad harder to get it to stay in place. It sometimes pulls up some of the designer series paper. But I think it worked. Okay. So now I have my ribbon on there. I will trim that up once I get it on. I'm going to get this glued on. This goes all the way from one edge to the other. So I just want to make sure that it's nicely laid out and then put some pressure on it. I love to use my bone folder for this because I can make sure the glue sort of squishes out everywhere. Um, and now I have it the way I like it. And then the last part now is the decorating part, which is always the funnest part. I'm going to just fold that up a little bit more. So let's put our opal rounds on it, which seems to be the one I've used all week long. I love the opal rounds. They go with everything, and they remind me so much of snow, so that's why I picked them. Okay. So all I need now is to tuck this in here. I did that purposely up here and here and not here and here because I want to sort of secure the ribbon in place. Um, I'm going to go ahead and trim that. Trim this. And that is our card for the day, except for we got to put our opal rounds on it. So we just got to decide where we want them. I always like one right there right near the sentiment, maybe one right over here, and then one up in here. So that's so pretty. Sort of space them differently. Just a really nice card uh, to remind us that it's still winter, but um, it doesn't have to be a Christmas card just because it's about snow. You can send it to someone you care about. So there you go. I hope you have a great day. I'll join me tomorrow on Fast Card Friday, um, and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.